Hey hey, it's Nathan Rose. In today's video, I'm giving my review of this book, The King by Jan Hein Donner. So who was Jan Hein Donner? Well, we have a picture of him right here on the back of the book, so take a look at that. Uh, he was a Dutch grandmaster, and he lived in the second half of the 20th century, or well, that's when his playing career was, and the book is a collection of articles written by him between 1950 and the late 1980s. So, so Donner has passed away now, but we still have this book as a reminder of not only his life, but what was going on in chess during that time. So, so this is not a how to play chess better book at all. I mean, there are some games in the book, but the, the value is not instructive. It's much more of a look at his life and and the events that were going on in this in this very very interesting time for chess. So as a writer, he was writing about events like the Fischer Spassky World Championship match in 1972 while they were happening, which is really interesting to read actually because you know sitting here in 2022, we we can look back on these events in hindsight and and. Uh, Put a story around it that way but to actually be writing about it at the time it was happening and to be able to now read about that perspective is is something pretty unique that i haven't come across before i mean other events as well there was the cup of korchnoi world championship matches and and all the theatrics which happened there um, the political maneuverings that were going on between the international chess federation and the soviet union so so really fascinating stuff um, but the most interesting and the most uh, fun part of the book is absolutely Donner's writing style. So um, he was a very controversial character. He wasn't afraid to speak his mind. He would insult people. Um, he would he would uh, try and get a reaction out of people just for fun. Um, and we don't really have this anymore in today's grandmasters, do we? We have we have very um, I would say boring players at the top level. When they're in a press conference, they never say anything interesting. They they always just resort to tired cliches and they don't give anything away. But but Dono was the complete opposite. So we, even though we don't really have anyone like him now, it's it's fun to look back at such a colourful character, and uh, you know to look back on those days as as um, yeah as, as uh, with a bit of nostalgia, I suppose. He was provocative, and I've ri I've written about him a little bit in uh, my book, Chess Opening Names, Volume Two. There's actually a variation in the King's Indian defence named after Donna, which I'll put the board position up here in this video so you can see it. It's characterised by the move c6 by Black on move seven in the in the um, orthodox main line of the King's Indian. So. So anyway, he's got a he's got a chess opening name named after him, but uh, but more importantly, he was writing about just what was happening in chess and showing the full gamut of emotions as he was doing it. So if you if you follow some of his games, for example, there was a game where he played against uh, Hans Ray. Now Donna was getting a little bit older, and he was looking down at this new generation of Dutch chess players and. And he was like, I can still beat them, you know, they're nothing special. Unfortunately, he lost the game, bit of a spoiler there. But um, but then you get to see the, the the feelings that every chess player has felt. But Donner was so expert at putting into words, right? Like he, he talked about how he would go home and cover the blankets over his face and howl for three days with agony. Um, well, we've all been there, right? Like if we've lost an important game, it's 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 not a nice feeling, but it's somehow comforting and uh, and and fun to read about other people going through it. Um, there there are so many stories in this book. Like it's it's organised as a series of short articles. It's not a biography. Um, it's not. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't have a traditional beginning, middle, and end. It's actually something like 150 short articles. But they're organised chronologically, so so it does tell a bit of a story of his life and also the events going on in chess around the world. 
and there, like I said, there were so many stories, so I can't give all of them, but I will give you just one to give you a bit of a flavour of Donna and the sort of thing that you can be in for if you decide to buy the book and read it yourself, which I'd highly recommend. There was a game between him and another uh, strong player, but played on a life-sized chessboard. So what do, what do I mean by this? So you've got a giant uh, set, set of squares, 64 squares, and each of the pieces and pawns are represented by real human characters. So you'd have eight soldiers on each side uh, for the pawns. You'd have a, a man dressed up as a king. You'd have a woman dressed up as a queen. There would be people riding on horses to represent the knights and so on. And then the two players, Donna and, and his opponent, would direct these people dressed as pieces around the board and play an actual game in life-sized uh, format. Now it's funny because uh, his, his opponent and Donna were standing near the A-file, so they were standing on that edge of the board. And uh, Donna found the queen on his own uh, side to be a rather attractive woman. So even though it wasn't the best move, uh, he decided to move the queen to a5, just so that he could, could get a bit of a closer look at her. <laughs> um, a little bit cheeky, but any red-blooded man can uh, can identify with that feeling, I think. So, yeah, I mean, very funny. And then he would write about it, so he wouldn't keep such a story to himself. And then later in the game, it started to rain and all the chaos that ensued there. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's one to give you a bit of a flavour. And... I will say one more thing. He had a he had a rival earlier in his career, named uh, Ludwig Prinz, and uh, Prinz was Prinz was a player that Donna came up against several times. But he didn't have a lot of respect for Prinz. When Prinz became the champion of the Netherlands, because Donna was away at another tournament and he, he wasn't able to compete. But anyway, Prinz became champion of the Netherlands, and Donna couldn't believe it, and he uttered the immortal words. He can't tell a bishop from a knight. <laughs> Very funny. So do yourself a favor, get the book. It is a long book. I mean, it's, it's, it's in quite small font, if you look at the, the words on the page. And there are some diagrams in there to break it up a little bit, but it's mostly text. Um, and it's 300 and, what is it, 381 pages long. <laughs> But you won't, you won't want to try and get through this book quickly. It's a book to savour, enjoy. The format of the book as well, being a series of short articles, means that it's very easy to, to pick up and put down again because each article stands on its own. A good book to have by the bedside, I'd say, for, uh, for a chess lover. If you enjoyed this review, please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel for more, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.